Hello, folks. We meet once again. Um, I think uh, that uh, the last time when I uh, made that video on uh, dying, death and dying, I kind of put myself out on a limb a little bit, um, not discussing the actual, you know, Buddhist uh, Vajrayana version of the stages of birth and death connected intimately with the um, Bardo Todol Chembo, or Chembo, I'm not sure, um, great book of liberation in the Bardo, uh, misnamed the uh, Tibetan Book of the Dead. So for the sake of particularly my five subscribers who are probably following more regularly and uh, deserve continuity, as well as for those of you that begin to chance upon these films, I want to review in more detail the stages of death and after death uh, up to rebirth. Uh, just for clarity's sake, also um, with a little bit of emphasis on what we can do in those stages. Uh, in my last talk, I really emphasized more what we can do in life, the natural bardo of this life as it's called. Uh, now a couple of things uh, are that um, uh, you know, a lot of us have tried to read the uh, Tibetan Book of the Dead, and uh, for a Westerner who doesn't have the cultural background, who doesn't have the oral uh, introduction, uh, it's a bewildering and could be a frightening book and a distracting book. One could get lost in the details and the uh, iconography and the names of the Buddhas and so on. So it actually could be a detraction rather than a benefit. So I would recommend you use the two sources that I have used, particularly uh, one by Lama Shimpen, which is a simple book, and I have made some notes to from that book to follow, So, because this material is detailed enough and I don't want to uh, pass on uh, bad information. Uh, so one would be Lama Shimpen's book, There's More to Dying Than Death. The other day I misnamed it, There's More to Death Than Dying. It's kind of a you can see why that's interchangeable in some sense. But there's more to dying than death, meaning death is just uh, one part of uh, the process of dying and rebirth. Um, also, if you wish to go into more detail, I think a healthy, uh, healthy option, in addition to that book by Lama Shempen, which is available at Amazon, by the way, uh, would be, of course, uh, Sojo Rinpoche's Tibetan book of living and dying. Why? Because that book was, uh, in fact, created with the very intention of providing information and introduction not only to the ideas or um, presentations of the Bardo Todo, the Tibetan Book of the Dead, but all of uh, what you would receive in the oral transmission of this whole cycle of teachings, the Bardo teachings, um, which were um, discovered texts. Uh, produced by Guru Rinpoche, Padmasambhava, later discovered. So, you know, one of the things that Western would ask is, uh, well, how do we know this is true? How do we, how do we get our information? Well, of course, we, we never will know 100% it's true until we die, will we? Because the direct, the direct knowledge is the knowledge, according to our teachings. However, uh, there are several sources. One, as I mentioned, of course, are the termas left by Guru Rinpoche, which have been discovered later to fit our times. And the cycle of teachings regarding the Bardo and the Book of the Dead are part of that cycle. And by the way, I forgot to mention, if you actually wish to read the book, uh, consider using uh, Francesca Fremantle's translation of the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Uh, there are other translations, uh, one, many at this point, but one by Robert Thurman, which is okay, but um, he uses a lot of fanciful, confusing terminology, like for example, for Guru, he calls him a mentor, and for the deities, I think he calls him something else, and he's got all these terms he's coined in an attempt to translate more faithfully, and what ends up being is uh, you can't then tell when you read that somewhere else what your, that it's the same same name, same thing. So uh, Francesca Fremantle's Tibetan Book of the Dead pretty much follows the standard terminology that's beginning to shape in the West for translations. So that would be a healthy option. Do not, do not, if you want to avoid being misled and confused, 
Do not use the, the old Evan Wentz translation from the 20s. Uh, that was mistranslated. He thought he was correcting the text, and he transposed some of the mandalas, some of the deities. Um, so it's kind of a little bit of a mess, uh, that translation is. So I would avoid it. However, you know, of course, it's a free country, it's a free world. You can, you can look at it, but just bear in mind that Francesca Fremantles would be, uh, would offer as the gold standard at this point. No, I don't know. I have not read any other translations than, uh, than Termins and uh, Fremantles. Well, yeah, two, three page translations from the internet, too. You might Google Book of the Dead, see what happens. Of course, up to you. Just consider the source, caveat emptor. Now, um, let's talk about the process. Uh, the process is basically uh, composed of four items. And by the way, I'm going to mention one more thing. You know, this is going to definitely be at least a two-part, maybe a three-part talk. And I very much encourage you to use the discipline and not just listen to part one and discard it. Uh, but, you know, listen to part two and part three to get the complete information. It's extremely valuable material. Not easily, um, not really easily to find, easy to find, easily findable. Uh, and very useful. So I suggest you listen to the whole thing. Perhaps download it. Listen to it again. Take notes. Um, of course, if you get the book, uh, Lama Shempens, there's more to time and death, and you, you have a reference. So in any case, the, the four parts of the dying process uh, are the dissolutions, which break up into external and internal dissolutions, which is where our you know, personality and the body, uh, connection to the body dissolve. Then there's the, uh, the very moment of death, where the consciousness is still within the body and the clear light dawns. Then uh, in a very rough general way, again, we're skipping steps, the bardo state after the death. And there's some stuff in between, I'll mention a little more. And then of course on the bardo of becoming, um, we have a rebirth. Uh, unless there's still chances for liberation, believe it or not. Um, but, you know, even a good rebirth is a wonderful thing. Um, so, you know, what do we rely on? What are the instructions for the person that's dying? Lama Shempe makes the point that regardless of the stage of death, or dying, stage of dying, the instructions are very much the same, and this should be reassuring, because again, if you try to start memorizing the stages and the different practices for different stages, it's just a source of confusion, and you know, the main thing is to be calm, open, and relaxed at the time of death, at the period after death. So, her her point is that these basic instructions are the same regardless of the stage of death. And some of those instructions are, uh, first of all, to be open to your experience, regardless what it is, turn to your experience, as it's said, uh, or as uh, Pema children might say, leaning to the sharp points. And uh, another teacher says just uh, turn to experience, turn to your experience, painful or pleasurable, and there's going to be fear, there's going to be suffering. Uh, and this is learned in getting life, practicing meditation. Uh, you know, one, one um, two sets of uh, valuable teachings about this are actually Pema Chodron's books. One is the Wisdom of No Escape, and the other one is the the places that scare you, because they both stress, emphasize a little more the Buddhist idea of opening to fear, opening to pain as well as opening to pleasure, opening to warmth. So, because 